after uh, cleaning the taper etc I just wanted to make sure that the uh, flywheel would fit the taper etc it should do the numbers match up like I say it's an attachy one so that's all good oh so I'll take it back off actually no not yet screw this um, bolt it's at the back here God's sake, what's all this rubbish? Uh. Oh. There's not a lot of grease or something, a lot of dirt squashed in to the splines for some reason. Oh, please so don't, don't say we need a gear puller. Oh, no, you just pull on the gears. I've lost a ring. That ring is, and it's now covered in shit. Good thing we have manuals, eh? So we've got this diaphragm spring, which is something to do with these double arrangement of gears. I'll look it up and find out what's going on. We have this splined sprocket gear with loads of crap on the inside. I don't know what's happening there. Looks like something's either got loads of shit in there or something's disintegrated like a... Looks like... I don't know. Any road, so we've got that. And this diaphragm spring, I'm sure this is put pressure from one gear to the next. Um, and this gear Yeah, something's given up the ghost. There's like a thin it's like another like a metal paste everywhere. I don't know if that's grease they put on it during assembly or what. Um So what we have, as I can see, two pins on this washer. So this washer comes off, and then you have two tiny, tiny, oh god, I don't know, six mil pins, and I'm guessing this can now, oh, it doesn't want to come. There we go. It's just the uh, vacuum of the oil. So this gear rides on here, and I'm guessing what happens is, is that these gears spin at the same speed due to the pressure of the spring. So you've got a washer with two alignment dowels, like so, and then this spring here, and then these grooves ride inside this spring. And uh, surely there should be some kind of guide rod, like a, a, a forked rod that presses against there. Not too sure. Right, let's I'll look that up. It's pretty funky though, whatever it does. The crank is now ready to move. So, I'm going to get this nut off the end I didn't tighten it on uh, not a bolt, sorry there's also, you can hear centrifugal weights although one of them is missing Whoa. and now another one is so they're basically We'll have a close look at that um, in a bit. Let me just get that. Wait! Let's bug it off. Today is the day of dropping things. Um, as you can see, it's getting pretty crowded. There's another two projects I'm doing at the moment that I need to. That's what I've been doing all week. 
and um, I need to finish them up so I can make some room for all this because like an idiot I never do one thing at one time so there's a weight missing out of there I don't know if it's in the box of the stuff it came with if not we'll machine a new one up um, so we'll remove all our bolts again I'll bring you back when I've got all these pulled out So all of a sudden we've got crank end play, but that's because them gears, and the gear's got a thrust surface on it and removed, so it wasn't like this before. There wasn't that much play in it. Shall we tap it from the other side? We can't get in the other side, so no. Oh, we can just hit the crank. No, it's probably oh yeah, I'm right, we're separated. Yeah, there's an O-ring in there. And that was was that loose? That's the way to do it, but it's the way I've done it. Yeah, there's a thrust surface there, so that's not really damaging anything. So, that's the crank out. So as you can see, it's a pretty empty case, and once we pull everything out, we've still got this oil burning everywhere. Can you see that? to get some more blue towel this stuff's at the kitchen let's have got this oil burn unless it's, you can't see it being a coating because it's no it's not a coating it's bloody burnt oil unless I'm mistaken but I'm no it's rubbing off All this needs cleaning out. Yeah, it's just burnt oil. Bit of um, kind of cleaner, you see that just takes it right off. Lovely and clean underneath. Look at that. Get some lint three cloths or an old t shirt or something. Clean it up properly, give it a blasting down. But, um, so you've got your main oil gallery dowel there, goes up to your camshaft, and uh, do you know what? Bugger me. I thought it does have main bearings but they're not split it's a one big circular bearing which we'll have to get a, a drift to knock that out but um, the main actual crankshaft which is heavy as fuck so you see oh, for god's sake so we have a main bearing that's in here it's got a tang that's bent outwards so there's only one way you can drive that out and that's that way so I'm going to have to machine up a, an aluminium plug that's just a bit smaller than this diameter and that can fit in with a shoulder inside the bearing and then we'll just press that out but um, that's a bloody tight fit there you can see the damage the uh, lack of tensioner and where the uh, actual chain is and there it's just eating into it 
literally just disintegrated the aluminium because you've got hardened steel from the chain and aluminium and the aluminium has got no chance especially cast aluminium but any aluminium would have no chance <coughs> so yeah it needs a bloody good flush out and I mean an extreme flush out the crank let's get a bit more of the uh, snot rag and um, clean it up a bit now, as I said, oh, I don't know if I did say, it's been a week since I've played with this, pretty much seven, uh, five days, six days, something like that. And uh, I don't just leave everything like this. So the cylinder's got a nice greasy helping of oil um, that I wiped on the insides of the cylinders to stop them rusting out, because that's the last thing you want when they're in good nick. So the crank's a pretty stout beast, and uh, you can see the oil channels that are ground into the uh, main bearing journal. Uh, main, main bearing journals. You can see that divide in the middle where the cranks don't make, where the conrods don't make contact. See the radiuses in there and in there, in here. One hell of a stout crankshaft is that. Right then. So what I want to do is make a really quick preliminary um, measurement of the um, main journals and the rod journals. Now luckily for me, and luckily for everyone who does this, um, these are pretty much within the same side. I'm just looking at the manual, I know what these, bear these numbers are. So they have an A, B and C bearing size, um, and they come in certain colours, pink, orange, etc. Um, and basically these numbers are telling you B, this is in the B category, the B size range, this journal is in the A, this journal is in the A, and this journal is in the B. So that's what that A, B, B, A malarkey stands for. And you can't see very well, so I'll just tip you. There we go. So, now that I understand what that is, these bearing numbers, which is quite cool, Basically, it means after this crankshaft was forged, etc., they then grind them to a, you know, we're touching on all surfaces, etc., and then they do the final grind, and then they say, well, these two journals are within this spec of bearings, and these two journals are within this spec of bearings, size, size range. Now, the A is biggest, so the A is the most meat and the C is the least amount of meat. So you kind of want A, B's or if you had a double A and a double A that would be wonderful. So we get our micrometer out and I've got my standard here which is a 25mm. <laughs> Make sure your anvils on your uh, micrometer are clean, there's no crap in there because if that gets trapped it's going to give you a shitty reading. And yeah, so we're in. We're within. Uh, what's that? That's 10. So we're within 5 microns. So, um, Sorry, within half a micron. No, no, we're within, yeah, we're in 5 microns, sorry. Oh, I don't know, I'm bloody on about, I'm not reading this properly. So we know that we're looking for 39, around about there. So what I'll do is I'll wing this up to around about. 40. So we're starting in the right ballpark. What you want to do is you want to try and pick a spot where there isn't a uh, there isn't a bearing. And um, so what we're reading here. And what you want to do is you want to rock. Your uh, micrometers over, and you'll fit it just gripping. That's what the ratchet's for. So what we're reading here, right? So that's six, seven, oh god, eight, one, two. So that's thirty-nine, thirty-nine point eight two, thirty-nine point eight two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for A's 
it's between 39.990 and 39.982 so we are literally on the band of the A so we're on the limit of the A because the bottom limit is 39.982 and we're reading 39.982 now this is a preliminary, uh, a preliminary measurement so the other the other bearing size the B size starts at 39.982 and goes down to 39.974 so we're definitely in the 8s the 98 just over 98 so I'll measure this more accurately and I've got another um, a digital micrometer and this one and I'll compare the two and you need to do two measurements you need to do um, pick a spot and then you need to turn it 90 degrees and measure that spot and you need to measure it three or four times take the average and um, and then look what you've got and that should give you a good measurement. So the other one, so what I like to do is I like to keep it set to where it was. You see that's just fitting, so they're pretty much. I know this isn't the most accurate, like I said, this is just a preliminary. That's just fitting. On the main journals, we are measuring out, at, and I thought they were the same, they just look the same, but they're not. I've got to get the rest of the uh, numbers from the uh, so that's what 40 1 2 3 no 42.98 so I haven't got them numbers right this moment but the main journals are that number and the main journals are B so we can only go as small as a C and then we're pretty much stuffed so it should be a set of C, I, I don't know the number but like I say you want to be in the A's because that's the widest and C is the smallest diameter you can have so you want to be in the A's if you can and if you're in the B's that's fine after god knows how many thousand miles etc um, but I'm happy with that just as it is just this little preliminary um, measurement so the next thing I want to do very quickly is measure the cylinders and um, the pistons very quickly. So we'll stick this away and we'll get the other kit 